Hi, thank you so much for joining me. In this video series, what I want to do is introduce the concept of how structure determines function. I think that's a, a really important concept in chemistry and biology and physics for that matter. I guess I'm life. So structure determines function. So let's look at a few of the different properties we could be looking at. So the first is electro, electrical conductivity. Conductivity requires some sort of freedom of motion or movement of electrons. So the, if we want to conduct, electrons have to be able to move. And I know that's pretty simplistic and uh, I'm sure physics teachers would be cringing right now, but I think it's a good start as we're understanding uh, how that applies to chemistry. Now, um, if we're talking about network covalent, very few network covalents actually conduct. I won't say very few, but um, some do, some don't. When they do, what it is depending upon is what we call an what is called an alternating double bond, and that is called a conjugated double bonded system. And so if we have alternating double bonds, these electrons are delocalized and we have freedom of movement through the network. So some of these will conduct. For metals, because we have our positive valence electrons surrounded by a sea of released valence electrons, those valence electrons are delocalized, they're free to move, hence metals conduct electricity. Ionic, well for ionic, it depends. It depends on their uh, state. If we have the solid state of ionic substances, we have fixed positive and negative charges in a very rigid alternating array of positives and negatives. There is no freedom of movement for electrons, so there is no conductivity um, for the, the electrons, no conductivity in the solid state. Once you melt it, those uh, negative charges and positive charges start to move a little bit. And when they move, that movement of ions, when ions can move freely, we have freedom of motion of electrons. So melted ionic do conduct. What about aqueous ionic? That's another important consideration. Aqueous ionic, you have positives and negatives, and those positives and negatives are surrounded by water now if they dissolve. If they don't dissolve, no conductivity. You have a solid sitting on the bottom of a beaker. But in this case, we have positives and negatives surrounded by water, so that allows a free flow of electrons throughout the solution. So because we have freedom of motion of the ions, we have freedom of motion of electrons, and this is actually given a very special name. Um, aqueous solutions that conduct, so it has to be aqueous, whoops, has to be aqueous. We have to have ions, separated, dissociated ions. And if those two things are true, both aqueous with dissociated ions, then we would call it an electrolytic solution. Think Gatorade and your electrolytes, okay? Covalent molecules. Um, we're going to be looking at not conducting at all. We're talking about discrete molecules with no conductivity, um, whether they are solid, liquid, or in the aqueous phase. All right, that's one property, electrical conductivity. What about structural integrity? How hard are they? How easy can we manipulate their shape? Well, for network covalent, it it depends. Again, it's kind of like the conductivity. It depends. Graphite is actually slippery because graphite, um, there's layers in the graphite attracted by London dispersion forces. 
And so those layers can slide past one another. Diamond, glass. Diamond is extremely hard and inflexible. Glass is hard and yet it's breakable. So that kind of depends. Metals. Your key structural issues with metals are how malleable, how ductile they are. Or there is a strength uh, scale called, I believe it's Mohs or something like that, where they um, can measure the strength of a metal. When we talk about malleable, we're talking about being able to take a hammer and press it into a shape. Like aluminum can make aluminum foil because aluminum is very malleable. Ductile is the ability to stretch that metal into a wire, copper wire, aluminum wire, for example. Okay, so they're malleable, ductile, and have varying degrees of strength associated with them. Ionic are brittle because ions are held in a rigid lattice um, they have little um, freedom of motion and therefore they they crack when stress is applied okay so what happens is you have that alternating array of positives and negatives and positives and negatives if you add a stress to that what happens is you get positives by positives and negatives by negatives and positives and negatives repel and those are fractured apart. Now that doesn't happen with metals because with metals when they get their positives and positives aligned we have like a buffer between them of the valence electrons that are freely moving acts as a buffer between the positive and positives so they don't repel. You don't have that buffer in ionic. So when you apply a stress and push like ions so they're too close to one another, you're going to have a repulsion. They will repel one another. And the, you know, crystal will fracture. Okay? Solids. They're neither brittle nor malleable or ductile. Sometimes they're solids, liquids, or gases. So their properties really vary all over the place. Okay. And um, the next series of videos are going to focus a little bit more on our molecular covalent molecules. And so I hope you will join me for part two of how structure determines function. Thank you so much.